Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, let's see a new topic to solve this differential equation. And this problem was originally attempted in Dr. Payam's video. I put the link in the description box so you can see it. In that video, Dr. Payam found the polar substitution method didn't work. In fact, if we apply the Euler substitution, this equation can be converted to the Abel equation of the second kind. And this type of equation was considered to be unsolvable until 2011. And I put the link for that breakthrough article under this video. So this is the background and the motivation I make this video. And in this video, I will solve this differential equation by using the method of series expansion. And finally, I will compare the result with the numerical result. So let's get started. So here is our differential equation with the initial condition y0 equal to 0. And we apply the series expansion method. So we write the solution in this form. So here we want to solve those coefficients, a0, a1, a2, and so on. And from our initial condition, y0 equal to 0, we can plug into this solution. So we got here. And immediately, we got a0 equals to 0. So we can write this solution in this form. And note here, for n, it starts from 1. And also, we can do the derivative, and we got here. And we have two options here. For option 1, we just plug in our solution templates to our original equation. And then we do the series expansion again for those terms inside the square root. But this will be very complicated, so this is not a smart way. And for option 2, we can square both sides, and we got here. And then we plug in those template solutions into this equation. In this case, we don't need to deal with those square root terms. After plug-in, we got this equation. And here we have infinite terms inside the parentheses. I copy the result from last slide. And here we will expand this equation and truncate the polynomial at power 8. And you will see the reason in the end of this video why I truncate this polynomial at x to the power 8. So keep watching. So for the left-hand side, after we expand it, we got here. And for the right-hand side, we got here. So here I have already collected those coefficients respect to the different powers. And I list them in the vertical direction, so it's better for you to visualize. So first, let's compare the constant term. So we got a1 equal to 0. If a1 is 0, then for left-hand side, those terms vanish. And for right-hand side, we got these terms vanish. And then we compare the coefficients for the x squared term. So we got here. And then let's compare the coefficients for the x cubed. For the right-hand side, because a1 is 0, so the coefficient equal to 0. So that means the coefficient of the left-hand side must be 0. And because a2 is not 0, so that means a3 must be 0. So we got a3 equal to 0. And if a3 is 0, then we got this term vanish. So for the last line, if we compare the coefficients, we got this equation. So we can keep going, and we can go to the coefficients for those higher order terms. So here I list those results. So you can see, for those outer terms, the coefficients vanish. And for those even terms, we can solve those coefficients, and we got here. So you can see, for a4, it depends on a2. And for a6, it depends on a2 and a4. And for a8, it depends on a6, a4, and a2. So the first thing is to solve the a2. But here, we got a2 equals to plus or minus 1 half. So we need to determine the a2 is positive or negative first. So I copy the results from previous slide. And to determine a2 is positive or negative, we need to go back to our original equation. Because those out terms vanish, so this solution is reduced here. And note here, for our original differential equation, the right-hand side is square root, so it's non-negative. And if right-hand side is non-negative, that means the left-hand side is non-negative. So the derivative of y is non-negative. And if the derivative is non-negative, that means the function y is increasing. And also we have the initial condition, y0 equal to 0. 
So that means this function starts from zero and then it's going up as illustrated here. But if we look at the neighborhood of x equal to zero, for example, when x equal to 0 0.0001, then the first term a2 times x square will be the dominant term. So it must be positive. So a2 must be equal to the positive one half. Then we plug in a2 and we can find those coefficients for a4, a6, and a8. So here I list the results for those coefficients. And then we plug in these coefficients so we can go to this power series solution. And finally, let's compare this result with the numerical result. So here you can see the result from the Warframe Alpha website. For the left panel, this blue curve is the numerical result, which is generated by using the fourth order rank kuta method. For the red panel, this red curve is plotted by using our series solution. So you can see those polynomials above this figure. And you can see these two solutions match very good. So that's why I truncate this polynomial at the power 8, because the series solution is converging very fast. In this last slide, I put those expansion coefficients here so you can compare them. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like it.